So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the test routines, initial power up, those kind of things, uh, as documented in the uh, Heathkit manual for the digital computer model H8. So I've got the system set up here. We can see the front panel. I don't have the bezel on. What we're looking at are four status LEDs over here, which are uh, it's like ION, MON, RUN, and POWER. So power on the bottom, RUN LED. I don't know what MON and ION are, ION are at this point. This is a split octal display. So first off, the machine works in octal. It's not the displays are in octal. It's not binary or hexadecimal. So octal uses three positions to represent numbers. Uh, display can go from 000 to 377. So in 377, I would have a binary 3 or a 11, binary 7 and 111, and a binary 7 again and 111. So it represents the total 8 bits here. The address bus is what's called split octal, which means the lower 8 bits are displayed from 000 to 377 and the upper 8 bits are displayed from 000 to 377. So split octal is kind of interesting because it breaks the address space out. So rather than this be, I don't even know how big it would be, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So it, it would run from 000000 to 177777. I may not have that quite right. But it's split octal, so the, the least significant byte and the most significant byte are each displayed as their own independent octal value. I can see here that this metal plate I have sitting here with the bezel because it's got uh, a bit of writing on it for me to reference. And here, let's turn the power on. You probably heard the beep. We are back in. Uh, those displays aren't showing up really well. I wonder if we'd be better with the bezel on. Let me... Uh, Put the bezel on and see if the video is any better, and I'll be back. Okay, the uh, seven segment displays are showing up much better here with the uh, red bezel on, so I've gone ahead and put the front of the machine back on. As we were kind of seeing below, we've got power, run, monitor, and ion, it looks like light, the split octal address space, and the data space. And the test routines step one is to turn the power switch on. There's a short beep, all decimal points are lit. All the decimal points aren't lit. That's interesting. Should all the decimal points be lit? We'll find out here. Well, they were for a moment and then gone, so that's interesting. It didn't come up. You let that capacitor discharge for a second. Okay, all the decimal points were lit and then went out. So it wants me to enter 040. 100 and we saw it crash immediately there so did I do something wrong zero four zero obviously I don't know what I'm doing and I really don't so this is all new to me and I don't have the screws in place so things are floating a bit weird here and maybe that floating is causing the intermediate failure. Zero, four, zero, one hundred. As you can see it's not responding to the keypad at all. I'm supposed to get a short beep as I push each digit. Seeing some stuff, obviously. There's a beep on the speaker. I don't know whether we are just extremely uh, intermittent here. Maybe I need to put a couple screws in, although those screws don't really go to grounds. Okay, maybe this is just, okay, it's just giving me examples here of things to enter. So let me get to the page where we actually enter a program. 
may well be that I've done. something wrong here and it may be that it's just not working I guess we're gonna find out so display if I type that in a short beep the decimal point scan from left to right there's an alter button the LEDs are scanning from left to right a short beep is you enter each digit and a medium beep when the three digits are entered zero seven eight and there was the long beep. A short beep, the memory address decrements one location. And the contents of address 0400 are displayed. Okay, I'm going to reset and actually walk through these steps in order here. I kind of skipped the order. So we're back initialized. It wants me to press the mem key, which is this one, and enter 040 100, and it's not taking that. Press the keys in the keys pressed result column, the sequence from left to right. So it's got me pressing mem. There was some key bounce. Now it wants 0, 4, 0, 100. It's not seeing those key presses. And alter. So it didn't actually take that memory address, which is weird. We should be able to enter a memory address here. Why can't I enter a memory address? Is that the memory address? Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. What's happening here is the PCB behind the bezel is shifted and these keys aren't depressing all the way. So what I'm going to have to do is work this bezel back off. And I think secure that front panel down to hold it better centered so that the... These keys won't be able to be pressed because they were hitting the metal front panel. So I will put some screws in here to hold this back flush and come back. Okay, I'm back. I've got the screws in holding the PCB for the front panel in place. And we should now be actually be able to follow these instructions and get key input. So we're going to do a mem address 040100. And that's now set that as the memory address. It wants me to press Alter. And um, the LED starts to scan right to left. Hopefully you're seeing that. We're going to enter a 076. And it jumps to the next memory address. I can hit minus and go back to the address we just entered. And plus to come back to the next address. We're going to enter 002, 062, zero 010, zero. So I'm working through the book here, 040, and we should now be looking at address 105, and I'll just get the rest of these keyed in, 006. Two one. Was 
115. Let me go back because I think there's a miss key. Address 114 is 040. So 013, 040. Address 115 is 016. 17, or no. Address 15 is 016. Address 16 is 011. As you can see, this is rather tedious. Address 122 is a 023. Wow. That entire sequence was input at the wrong address. 117 is a 176. 116 is a 011. Entire sequence wrong. Now, if you've never experienced an old machine like this where you're interacting at this fundamental level, rather through toggle switches on a front panel, or in this case, a little more intelligent monitor. You can see that this was rather tedious back in the day. It should have been 015 and it was. 137 gets a 302. 140 is a 131. unhappy there. 145 is a 040. This is my first ever time entering a program into an H8 computer. The paradigm is familiar from working with other machines with various front panels from deck machines uh, to S100 machines, etc. Uh, it's just, well, I got off an address there again. Go back to 165. How did I get off an address? I was keeping an eye on that. 160 is a 076. 0, 062, 315, 140. Right here, 002, 303, 105. It seems like every time I talk, I make a mistake. Two seven zero, and we should be up to address one seventy three, and that 
wraps around to the next page, and there's a whole lot still more to go. 272. Exciting, I know. We're getting close. I don't actually know what this program does. I didn't read in, in enough depth here, obviously. Two seven five. Two seven two. Two seven one. We should be at address sixteen. Yep. Another two seven one. Seven three I don't actually have the uh, mnemonics for what this program is it's just a dump of values to be typed in two three six is three three six two. Six two three six three seven six two six two two three six three seven six and at address two thirty three we'll put in a, a three sixty two. Now I could go back I guess and step through that and verify all that, but I'm actually not going to do that at this point. So we're sitting at address 040234. I want to hit Alder again, and the Elisa stop scanning. I want to hit Reg. There should be a key here labeled Register on the period. PC6 out. Alter. Zero four zero one hundred. So we're putting back in the start address, and we're going to hit decimal points. Continue to scan. Hit Alder. There's a here's go. Your H8 is up and running. So there's was the initial test program. Just to see the machine doing something. And as you can see, it's telling us your H8 is up and running. These are seven segment displays. You obviously can't do great uh, ASCII text, but that's actually pretty cool to see. So and it's actually up and doing something. So. Yeah, there's a demo of entering a, a, a program and actually getting the system to do something. Uh, kind of, you know, nice and interactive through the keyboard. Uh, this is certainly easier than toggling toggle switches. To enter this stuff, the keypad made it very nice. Uh, if this machine had the original 4K card here with the 8080, this would have been the configuration, if that was the 4K card, it would have been pretty much the configuration minimum you had to buy to do something with this. And this is about what you could do, since there was no mass storage without a, an I.O. card. You could hand key in little programs uh, and run them and interact through the displays and the keypad. So, anyhow, I'm going to let this just run here for a bit, exercise the machine, and we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you.